So, next is disadvantages of low power factor, right. So, what are the disadvantages? For a three phase balance system, for example, say if load is P L, say some terminal voltage is V and power factor is cos phi, then load current is given by I L is equal to P L upon root 3 V cos phi, this is equation 35. Now, if P L and V, if both are constant say, then the load current I L is inversely proportional to the power factor, if P L and V both are constant, that is phi constant, cos phi is constant, if then if cos phi is low, then I L is large, if P L will be constant and cos phi is low, so I L will be large. The poor power factor of the system has the following disadvantages. So, this is uh, for first couple of hours, this is for your some general uh, ideas of the system or power factor. Now, Number one, the rating of generators and transformers are inversely proportional to the power factor. Thus, generators and, the, and transformers are required to deliver same load that is real power at low power factor. If power factor is poor, hence system KVA or MVA supply will increase, right? Because if power factor is poor, although to supply the same real power that KVA or MVA supply will increase because reactive power will increase, right. Now, because, uh, hence uh, many, uh, many other things are associated with that later we will discuss. At low power factor, the transmission lines feeders or cable have to carry more current for the same power to be transmitted, because, uh, because, uh, because of poor power factor, uh, more uh, uh, your what you call reactive power has to flow to the line, right. So, this thus conductor size will increase because current will increase, right. Therefore, ampacity of the conductor will increase, conductor size will increase. If current density in the line is to be kept constant, right, therefore, uh, the, uh, at low power factor, the uh, transmission lines, feeder or cable have to carry more current for the same power to be transmitted. Thus, conductor size will increase. If current density in the line is to be kept constant, Right. Therefore, more copper is required to for transmission line feeders and cables to deliver the same load, but at low power factor. That means, at low power factor current will be high, right. Therefore, the conductor size will increase, right. Therefore, this uh, if conductor size increases, is, uh, you need uh, if you need more uh, volume of the copper will be required, right. So, that way it is, uh, that way it is, uh, I mean explained. Right. Even now, conductors are ACS are conductor, right? All these things are there, but volume of the conductor will increase, right? For to, uh, for the same load to be transmitted. Therefore, power factor is an uh, poor power factor has lot of disadvantages, right? Number three is power loss is proportional to the square of the current, and hence inversely proportional to the square of the power factor. So more power loss is incurred at low power factor, and hence poor efficiency. That means, transmission line efficiency will be poor because line current will increase and therefore, power loss will increase, right. So, this is th number 3 and number 4 is low lagging power factor result in large voltage drop, right, which result in poor voltage regulation. Hence, additional regulating equipment is required to keep the voltage drop within permissible limit, right. So, all these are the disadvantages of poor power factor. We always want that for any system, it should operate at unity power factor, perhaps in reality it may not be possible, but we want that, right. So, electric utility utilities insist the industrial consumer, particularly industrial consumers to maintain the power factor 0 0.8 or above, right. Uh, because if industry, they have different parts of tariff, right. Sometimes they, char they charge on kilowatt rate, you got kilowatt demand, KVA demand, they have two part or three part type, right. If your power factor is poor, then KVA demand will be more, then more tariff, uh, that uh, the based on KVA demand also, uh, they charge, utilities they charge from the industry on KVA demand. That is why they have to improve the power factor, right. So, the power tariffs are devised to 
penalize the consumers with low lagging power factor and force them to install power factor correction devices, for example, sun capacitor. That if your power factor is poor, you will take, uh, you will draw more KVA from the utility, right? And in this case, you have to pay more money because they, they have a two part tariff, they charge on your maximum KVA demand also. If your KVA demand is less, if KVA demand is less means power factor is better, right? Every KVA demand is more means power factor is poor. So, that is why they will always try to see that KVA demand is less because they one part of the tariff is based on their kilo volt ampere or KVA demand, right. Now, various causes of low power factor. Most of the induction motors operate at lagging power factor, right. The power factor of these motors falls with the decrease of load. This is one reason. Then Second one is occurrence of increased supply main voltage during low load periods, right. The magnetizing current of inductive reactants is increased and power uh, of the electrical plant as a whole comes down, right. Uh, it is it is actually a power factor, right. The third one is very low lagging power factor of agricultural motor pump set. Agricultural motor pump set they operate at very low power factor, right? I mean very poor and because of that also sometimes agricultural motor pump set also you will find that frequent burning of the windings fault will be there, right? Then arc lamps, electric discharge lamps and some other electric equipments operate at very low power factor, right? Arc and induction furnaces operate on very low lagging power factor. So, these are some of the equipment they operate at very low lagging power factor, right. These are some of the, so uh, your what you call the, co they are uh, common, uh, common reason for low power, various cases for low power factor, right. Next we will take another example, right. A peak demand of a generating station is 90 megawatt and load factor is 0.6. The plant capacity factor and plant use factor are 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 respectively. This plant capacity factor and plant use factor earlier we have discussed, right. Determine daily energy produced, B install capacity of plant, right and, and C that reserve capacity of plant and D utilization factor. These four things you have to obtain daily energy produced, then install capacity of plant, then reserve capacity of plant and D utilization factor, right. So, solution maximum demand is 90 megawatt. This is given maximum demand is given 90 megawatt, right. And your load factor is given 0.6 that is also given. Therefore, average demand is equal to maximum demand into load factor. So, average demand is equal to 90 into 0 0.6 hence 54 megawatt. This is the average demand. Now, daily, daily energy produced is equal to average demand into 24 hours in a day. So, 24 that is 54 into 24 it is equal to 1296 megawatt hour, right. So, from equation 3 now plant factor is equal to this part B. Plant B you have to find out install capacity of plant. Now, plant factor is equal to annual energy produced, right, divided by maximum plant rating into the time. Plant factor is given 0 0.5, it is given, right, and actual energy produced already you have got it 1296 megawatt hour. This also you have got it, therefore. Therefore, maximum plant rating it is 1 to 9 6 right divided by 0 0.5 into 24 is equal to 108 megawatt. This is the plant rating. Therefore, the plant rating is equal to install capacity. So, install capacity is 108 megawatt right. Now, part C reserve capacity is equal to install capacity minus peak demand install capacity is 108 uh, megawatt and peak demand is 90 megawatt that is already given, peak demand is given 90 megawatt, right. Therefore, 
108 minus 90 that is 18 megawatt right and from equation to utilization factor right uf is equal to maximum demand of the system divided by rated system capacity maximum demand is 90 megawatt and this is rated system capacity that is install capacity that is uh, that is the same thing that is the rated system capacity 108 megawatt so utilization factor is 90 divided by 108 that is equal to 0.833 right so this is the general so some examples some four five examples uh, standard examples we have taken for this you know uh, that introduction part altogether the structure of power systems and few other aspects right so from this uh, some we have we we have some general ideas regarding the different terminology regarding transmission uh, regeneration transmission and distribution systems right plus uh, we have seen uh, that relationship between load factor and loss factor that how direct it is not possible but some relationship has been established and those formula for relationship between loss factor and load factor are commonly used right and some general ideas you have regarding different type of load factor loss factor utilization factor coincidence factor then demand uh, factor then diversity factor all this terminology uh, in the beginning we have used right and after this we will uh, we will uh, uh, start uh, for this thing is that that uh, your what you call that uh, 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 resistance inductance capacitance of the transmission line first we will uh, see that resistance then we will see that your uh, what you call uh, uh, inductance and then we will see the capacitance of the this thing uh, transmission line right so uh, these are the common thing for this uh, uh, power system course and so first thing is that we will start from the uh, this thing that resistance and inductance of transmission lines after that we will see that your what you call that uh, capacitance so basic purpose of a transmission network is to transfer electric energy that we have seen uh, this thing we have, we have the previous thing from generating units at various locations right to the distribution system which ultimately supplies the load so transmission system actually transmit power from the generating to the consumer distribution side right so transmission line also interconnect neighboring power utilities just we have discussed before right which allows not only economic dispatch of electrical power within regions during normal conditions but also transfer of power between regions during emergencies right so this is that interconnected operation we have seen before that uh, how actually different areas are interconnected how it will be useful that uh, reasons for interconnections right basically a transmission line has four parameters resistance inductance capacitance and sound conductance these four parameters are there for transmission system uh, transmission line so generally uh, uh, your uh, resistance is the important part of a transmission line uh, because uh, it consumes its copper loss i square r right it uh, that is the major thing so resistance is an important and uh, for transmission system that uh, uh, different uh, for uh, different uh, your what you call different voltage levels the different type of uh, conductors are used particularly the for transmission system uh, I, I, if i can recall all sort of thing that uh, you will find the conductors names are on the name of the animals like zebra then tiger right then your uh, wolf uh, that different uh, name of the different type of animals right those conductors and it depends on the voltage level different conductors have uh, different resistance per ohm per kilometer and as well as that reactance right so while of course uh, it has a, it's a bundle conductors are there double circuit lines are there different type of uh, when you have seen that high tension transmission line you have seen in each phase may have two or three or even more conductors bundle conductors are there sometimes single conductors are there in each phase 
right so all these all these things are uh, your uh, this uh, resistance it depends on the your of course depends on the type of the uh, material whatever you use for the conductor and its cross sectional area because we know r is equal to resistance is equal to rho into l upon a is the cross sectional area of the conductor so this uh, when uh, if i if i recall correctly the resistance of course it depends on the cross sectional area if you have a if you have a very uh, you know large if the cross section of the conductor is large right then r is equal to rho l by a so naturally resistance will be lower right but in the case of reactor resistance vary uh, in a very you know in a live from 33 kb to 400 kb transmission line say resistance are different they are totally different i mean quite uh, lower value to higher uh, higher value to lower lower value from low voltage to high voltage whereas in the case of uh, inductance and hence the reactance uh, whenever we try to compute i was making some computation i found that reactance uh, part generally uh, voltage level from 33 kv to uh, say 400 kv reactant parts roughly it will find it varies in between 0 0.26 0 0.26 ohm per kilometer to 0 0.34 or 0 0.35 ohm per kilometer Right, this way more or less it varies, right? Where a resistance var resistance variation is much more for uh, your uh, your uh, transmission uh, uh, line, right? So later we will try to see. So this uh, this uh, sound uh, this sound conductance actually we have told three parameters for resistance, uh, inductance, capacitance, and sound conductance. So, sound conductance actually accounts for leakage currents flowing across insulators and ionized pathways in the air, right. So, but these leakage currents are negligible, these leakage currents are negligible as compared to the current flowing in the transmission lines. So, this sound conductance, conductance thing we will not consider for this, for our study, right. But for the sake of, you know, clarification, basically for transmission line we consider four parameters. So, resistance, inductance, capacitance and your conductance, right. So, it is for across the insulator it may happen and ionized pathways in the air, right. But the series resistance cause a, causes a real power loss in the conductor because I square loss, R loss will be there. So, resistance of the conductor is very important in transmission efficiency evaluation and economic studies because if resistance uh, is more then power loss will be more, right. So, this will be, this is very important. Second thing is the power transmission capacity of the transmission line is mainly governed by the series inductance x, right. For a transmission line, if you see that r by x ratio is quite small or other way x by r ratio is quite high, right. Therefore, this your power transmission capacity of the transmission line is mainly governed by the series inductance, right. And third point is the sun capacitance causes charging current to flow in the line, right, and assumes importance for medium and long transmission line, long overhead lines. If it is a cable, then perhaps at low voltage level, you linear 11 kb also, you have to consider the charging current, you cannot ignore. Right, but for overhead transmission line, this charging uh, your sound capacitance up to 33 kV level you may ignore, but 66 or even 33 kV people are considering it. But if it is 66 kV or above, you have to consider the your sound capacitance. But if the distribution side at 11 kV side, there is no need to consider the for overhead distribution, overhead 11 kV distribution system, there is no need to consider the your charging capacitance or sound capacitance, right. But for cable, you have to consider, even it is 11 kV also, you have to consider because their charging capacitance is quite, uh, I mean, it has a, a significant value, right. You cannot, you cannot ignore that, right. So, so, these parameters are uniformly distributed throughout 
but can be lumped for the purpose of analysis and approximate basis. Actually, transmission line you have seen these parameters are uniformly distributed, right? But for our understanding and for our analysis, we will consider they can be lumped for the purpose of analysis and approximate basis. So, this way we will analyze. For example, let us start from the line resistance, right? So, generally the DC resistance of a solid round conductor is given by we put RDC is equal to rho into L upon A. This is equation 1 because this is a second topic. So, this is again equation 1, right? Rho is equal to resistivity of the conductor, L is equal to length of the conductor, and A is equal to cross sectional area of the conductor, right? So, the conductor resistance is affected by three factors one is the frequency second is the spiraling and third is the temperature. These three factors basically affects the conductor resistance and this is basically a DC resistance R D C is equal to rho into L by A, right. So, the DC resistance of a stranded conductor is greater than the value given by equation 1 because spiraling of actually, actually if you look at the if you look at that uh, the transmission con line conductors they are actually your spiraling of the strands make them longer than the conductor itself. It is not a solid round conductor it is conductor but it is stranded, uh, stranded conductor right and because of spiraling that actual length is uh, slightly your uh, longer than the conductor itself, right? This increase the increase in resistance due to spiraling is around 1 percent for 3 strand conductors and about 2 percent for concentrically stranded conductors. So, little bit higher, but 1 percent, 2 percent is uh, not that uh, very high, but you have to consider, you have to consider. Now, when an alternating current flows through a conductor, the current distribution actually is not uniform, right. For DC current, the current distribution is uniform, right, over the conductor cross sectional area and the degree of non-uniform increases with increase in frequency. Actually, if it is a DC current, no, that suppose current is, suppose cross sectional area is say 5 centimeter square for a conductor, very large of course 5 centimeter square and say 5 ampere current is flowing. So, current density will be 5 by 5 1 ampere per centimeter square and it is uniform for DC current, right. But when alternating current or AC current flows, right, through a conductor, the current distribution is not uniform, right, over the conductor cross sectional area and the degree of non uniformity increases, right, with increase in frequency. And this we will see later on when we will study this inductance, right. The current density is greatest at the surface of the conductor. This causes the AC resistance to be somewhat higher than the DC resistance, right. And this effect is called as skin effect. When we will study inductance at the time we will see what is skin effect, right. That means at every, every point of that cross section, the current density is not uniform for your uh, this thing when uh, for a alternating current, right, current density is different. So, that means this shows that AC resistance is higher than the DC resistance, right. So, this effect actually is known as skin effect. So, the conductor resistance increases with the increase of the temperature. If you know that if temperature varies, then conductor resistance also will increase, right. For small changes in temperature, right, the resistance increases linearly as temperature increases. If temperature changes is small, the resistance will also it, this thing increase your what you call linearly. So, and the resistance that of temperature T is given by you know this R t is equal to R 0 1 plus alpha 0 into t, this is equation 2, where R t is equal to resistance at t degree Celsius, these are all basic thing, right, and R 0 is equal to resistance at 0 degree Celsius and alpha 0 
is the temperature coefficient of resistance at 0 degree Celsius. So, by equation 2, by using equation 2, the resistance R2 at a temperature T2 degree Celsius can be found if the resistance R1 at a temperature T1 degree Celsius is known that is that R2 upon R1 right is equal to T2 plus 1 upon alpha 0 divided by T1 plus 1 upon alpha 0. That means, if you know if you if you know the resistance R2 at temperature uh, T2 degree centigrade can be found if the resistance R2 R2 can be found at T or temperature T2 if the resistance R1 at temperature T1 if it is if it is known to you. So, what we will do from this relation we will write one equation R2 is equal to R0 plus 1 plus uh, alpha 0 your uh, T2 another one we will write R1 is equal to R0 1 plus alpha 0 T1 and if we divide then you will get R2 upon R1 is equal to T2 plus 1 upon alpha 0 upon T1 plus 1 upon alpha 0 right. Now, this is the this is that your uh, what you call this is the resistance and where, although we will study everything slowly and slowly and uh, I believe that uh, 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 many of you have studied this inductance, capacitance all these things right. So, uh, during this time apart from of course, next we will come to inductance after that capacitance and after that that medium line, long line, short line, but before that I am giving one exercise to all of you and you try to do this. For example, for example, this is an exercise for you right, this is an exercise for you. Suppose you have all these things we will study, but in advance I am giving suppose you have a transmission line this side is sending in this voltage is say V 1 angle delta 1, this side is receiving end is sending in voltage V 2 delta 2 right. This impedance of the line is R plus J x current flowing through this line is I and here you have load P plus J Q. This is the load right. Now, I am not writing anything, but, but from my recorded voice you can make out right. Now, my objective is I want to maintain this V 1 and V 2, this is voltage magnitude, V 2 voltage magnitude. I want to maintain my V 1 must be equal to V 1 must be equal to V 2. I want to maintain that for which I have to connect a sun capacitor here which is injecting that say Q C I put J Q C which injecting a your what you call a reactive power here right to find to maintain voltage V 1 initially when P when, when it was not there V 2 was say V 2 was less than V 1 it is a lagging load. So, V 2 was less than V 1 current is flowing in this direction. Now, as soon as I put some value Q C here I want through this I want to maintain V 1 is equal to V 2 then then I want to find out Q C in terms of I made function of in terms of V 1 V 2 P and Q delta has to be eliminated. There should not be any delta in mathematical expression. I want to find out Q C must be function of V 1, V 2, P and Q right. Uh, only given hint is that your uh, Q C when you will try to find out it will be a quadratic equation of Q C. There will be two solutions for Q C, one is feasible and other is not feasible, but both the solution will be function of V 1, V 2, P and Q, but one is feasible other is not feasible right. So, this exercise I am giving you and those who will take this course uh, this is an exercise if you can do this of your own I will I will, I will solve it, but uh, before that before uh, those video lecture when you will see before that if anybody can do it and can show this to me then I will appreciate that. Right. 
So, this is a very interesting problem. So, 